Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles Sebastian. Welcome, you guys, to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover things from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we got a pretty, pretty uh, serious show for you guys. Before we get into it, please make sure you like the video uh, and subscribe to the channel, right? So today, it looks like um, we have some underlying beef that's been taking place here. And before we even get into it, let me just quickly say that uh, none of this surprises me. Now, as you guys know, originally JJ Reddick came into the four um, when he started doing his podcast, although he was a former NBA player, the old man in the three, right? He used to do his podcast and then it was a very successful podcast. And ultimately we heard that he was going to be joining ESPN to, you know, as a part-time contributor. And we started seeing him on shows like ESPN first take. Um, and during his visits on ESPN first take himself, and Stephen A. Smith had some pretty, pretty contentious moments. Moments that, if I'm being frank with you, I'm surprised that, you know, um, J.J. went at Stephen A. Smith uh, as directly as he did. And many times he was able to get Stephen A. Smith to just kind of back off and try to play it off and say, oh, no, it's fantastic. You know, this is perfect. I mean, you know, we're all friends behind the scenes. It's great for ratings and all of that stuff. Right. But um, ever since we started hearing the news that J.J. Reddick could potentially become the head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, we began to see Stephen A. Smith take some pretty, pretty uh, strong positions against JJ and essentially saying things that I think some people felt out there, right? Um, but Stephen A. Smith being the politician that he is, he would always find a way to couch his real opinions by basically spewing out compliments to begin with. You know, I think JJ is great, this and this and this and this, but he's really an acquired taste and blah, 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 blah. Well, apparently... Some of these things that Stephen A. Smith has been saying about J.J. Redick um, hasn't been going over well with him, right? And we came across an article here. What is it? From thesun.com. Uh, this is from their sports section. Uh, and essentially it says, Stephen A. Smith spotted outside ESPN Studios after rift, rift with J.J. Redick emerges and issues behind the scenes at ESPN uh, first take. And I went in to read some of the details what that article entailed and it turns out that Stephen A. Smith uh, and J.J. Reddick may have some issues here so th that's the article that we want to really uh, focus in on today but before we even get into what this article had to say today's uh, today's video is uh, brought to you by our sponsor Game Time. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball which makes getting tickets faster and easier. For example, I am super excited about the upcoming MLB games. With Game Time tickets, I can easily pick the best tickets for me. I love that I can choose between different deals. I have the option to select the cheaper deal, the best option deal, or my favorite, the flash deal. The flash deal gives me the option to find discounts that I can only find on game time. Once I select the ticket I want, I can see view my seat. And it's not just restricted to baseball. I can also look for the best ticket deals for other sports like football, the NBA, concerts, comedy, or other theater shows. Included in my purchase, I also have a 24 hour return guarantee, a lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Again, create an account and redeem code CLNS for $20 off. And remember, whenever you support this sponsor, you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So let me get into what this article has to say here. It then continues on. Stephen A. Smith dressed and pressed while leaving ESPN studio. The first take host is known for spiffy suits and kept up his style uh, last week. Then continues on. Um, uh, Stephen A. wore his iconic suit. And then it goes. Stephen A. Smith took on his usual duty starring on the show alongside Molly Karam. After completing the show, Stephen A. Smith remained in his iconic suit before strutting out of the studio. He kept things simple, sporting a blue suit with a tie. Uh, underneath his suit was spotted a shirt and a complete look. Stephen A. Smith was dripping, uh, was gripping an orange on his way to the out of the studio, perhaps taking a snack for the road home. The 56-year-old uh, is continuing his duties as things get tense on set on the set of first takes. Stephen A. Smith reportedly hasn't spoken to J.J. Reddick for weeks, sources confirmed to the U.S. Sun. Insiders at first take said Reddick didn't uh, stand their BS when Stephen A. Smith and Shannon Sharp made claims on the show. People on the team told Smith that it's unfair 
to bash JJ for not being like him. A journalist who works on the show told the the, the U.S. Sun, uh, his way is controversial, always being against other people in arguments. He's criticized Reddick for his career choices, which left them not talking to each other uh, in the last few weeks. The situation was getting ridiculous. The insider added, something had to change. Something did eventually change as Reddick accepted the position as a Los Angeles Lakers head coach. Any issue, uh, any issues with him should come to an end now that he isn't on the show anymore. That doesn't mean everything is smooth sailing, though. Some at the show still feel are still feeling the tension. Everyone works their ass off uh, for the show to do uh, to be the best on TV. And many tensions have been rising between journalists, the pundits and the production crew, said another member of the staff. It's very annoying to deal with. Uh, it, it is possible that Stephen A. Smith may not even remain on the show as he hasn't come to an agreement on a contract uh, extension. Stephen A. Smith is seeking a $25 million per year figure, a figure that ESPN has not been willing to match. And then the article goes on to say a few other things there. So what are my thoughts on this news? Look, um, initially I was a fan of J.J. Reddick. He then began to lose me and a lot of people when he started to disrespect players from the, from, from, from the previous eras, something that caused him to get called out by some of the grand, uh, Pantheon great players, Bob Cousy, Jerry West, Dominique Wilkins, uh, Michael Cooper. All of them were basically saying that J.J. Redick was a moron. Some of the things he was saying were moronic, right? That's what they were saying. So that's where he turned me off. Um, in the case of J.J., J.J. Redick is a very interesting figure, and I'll tell you why. J.J. Redick, claims that he dislikes the direction in which sports media had gone with the things that they said, what they say, you know, it being, it being kind of controversial and all of that. But nevertheless, J.J. Reddick would always find some way to end up on first take, ESPN first take. He would claim that the show was toxic for sports and all of that. But nevertheless, you're always on the platform complaining about how, how, how bad it is. So my thing is, if ESPN First Take is a bad platform, why even go? Number one. Number two, Stephen A. Smith has said it on many occasions that he decides who gets invited on the show. So why would you continue to bring a guy like this on your show who's always trying to make you look like a damn fool on TV and is always complaining about the fact of how the show is done and all? Why would you even bring him on the show? What would have surprised, what would I, what I would have liked Stephen A. Smith to say to J.J. Reddick? It's like, J.J., if you're always going to be complaining, then why are you always coming on the show? Simple. Simple. And then J.J. would not be left to say, well, you know, and then that's it. J.J. Reddick, J.J. Reddick is always whining and complaining and pissed off about something. I really don't care about J.J. Reddick's side in this story. I really don't. He's always mad about something. He's always condescending. He thinks he knows everything. So I really don't care. My thing is, if this is how J.J. Reddick felt in the first place, why did you continue to go on the show? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, if you didn't like the way it was done, then why did you even bother going? And by the way, let's just be let's just state let's just state the obvious. J.J., although you do some good things in sports media, you're also full of it as well. You're also full of shit as well, too. Let's like let's not forget that you made it your position to defend every single thing athletes would do. And to and in order to get an honest take out of you when an athlete F's up is like trying to squeeze water from a freaking stone. So don't act like as if you're above it all. You're above the fray. Like I've got this thing figured out and these people don't really know what the hell they're doing. If that's the case, why are you on his show? Why isn't he on your show? Let's cut the nonsense. These are my thoughts. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We catch you guys on the next show. Peace.